I'm not thinking about losing. Why would I lose? I'm, not, I'm killing it right now. I'm like, my, my, I got a great team behind me. My family supporting me. I'm in a great place. Got no injuries. Like, I, the millions where it's coming. I'm going to the millions. So, I'm not worried about the 200,000 right now. That's If that comes, shoot, that came. But, you know, and I'll be blessed for it. But, you know, I'm looking for that million. Visualization is something that if you don't visualize it happening, you're not seeing yourself do it before the actual event happens. So for me to visualize, my entire life I've visualized getting my hand raised, winning Tulsa Nationals, winning the Triple Crown Award, winning the Trinity Award, winning a state title, winning two, winning three, winning four state titles, standing on the podium, having four of my state medals around my neck after my senior year of high school, being on the podium at the NCAA tournament, all that stuff is stuff I've visualized. I do do this Wait, do you do this show? Come on, man. Get in your back, get inside guard. Get in your back in the guard. Get in the back in the guard. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. It's the one thing about me. I'm very, uh, go with the flow. So whatever I'm told to do, I'm good at listening. So, uh, you know, whatever he says to do, I'm going to trust him. I'll just do whatever he says that day. And, you know, he'll work with me. So if I'm, you know, hurting or something is going on, you know, I just got to let him know. And, you know, if we need to adjust it, we'll adjust it. But uh, for the most part, especially because, you know, I haven't really been hurt at all. And we just uh, just do what we're told. Uh, I love the kid's grit. I love his I love his tenacity. I love that he's a vet and he still is hungry and humble. And, you know, he's coachable. That's the thing is he has been around a long time and he absolutely has earned his stripes as a, as a veteran, but he's still here learning on a daily basis. And that's not easy for some vets. Some vets are stuck in their ways and you can't, you can't hardly teach them anything. You know, it can help sharpen them a little, but he's willing to be taught and he's willing to absolutely take his game past where it's ever been. And that to me is important because plateauing for him is not an option. And me as a coach, it's not either. So we come from the same cloth when all of that is said and done. It's gonna get weird. Oh yeah. Let's get weird, Boo Boo. Lance started coming here to Shrink Tour. Um, we were able to work together. We started hitting off right away. I actually had Dan, Dan Ige fighting that same week, and then Lance approached me about coming out to corner him for uh, for PFL. Um, automatically, there was a there was a connection there, man. I think for me, I look at a guy with a championship mindset. You know, he's been at the highest level. He's came came from a, a great wrestling background already. Um, Great pedigree with Team Alpha Male. Came here and just looked to try to get a little bit better. And for me, I look at guys like that that want to work hard, that I want to surround myself with. I want to be around guys who elevate my game, make me better. And you know, it's just been a, it's been a great relationship ever since, man. We hit it off right away. So um, since then, you know, we've been uh, collecting this bond, and it's just that sweat equity together. We get in the gym, we work hard together, and we're working to uh, a common goal, which is to win a world championship. Says the late guy. Vinny, baddest motherfucker in Jiu Jitsu, my opinion, one of the greatest ever. He can submit your neck, your toes, asshole, anything you give him, he's gonna break. I have to stop him and say, hey, stop training, he's working so hard, and I, I feel like he's motivated, you know? He's, he's uh, working three, four times a day, and, and he, he know this can change his family, and he feel like he has something to prove, you know? He, have, he didn't have a good run in BFL or the UFC, but he had an amazing run in BFL. And BFL gave him a great opportunity to show this hunger. And he's coming, man. There's a lot of tough guys in this tournament. Anything can happen, but uh, definitely he's one of the favorites. What people don't understand about this grind that y'all go through day in and day out, it's a Saturday and y'all in here going crazy. Bro, number one thing, you gotta approach the game humble. Humble, humble, humble. I just got my black belt and I just got ragdolled. 
by a really high, high level of my belt. So, I mean, I could get frustrated, go home and have a bad day, or I could take it as a lesson and learn. And I think I'm gonna do that, and that's the grind. Having failures on a regular, fucking up, getting the shit beat out of you, coming back, learning from your mistakes, and keep on fucking grinding. That's the grind, and that's what it takes. So everybody tends to think that fighting, it's, a, it's an easy thing to do. That's why sometimes I see a lot of criticism from uh, fans, you know, saying these guys suck, that guy suck, but they don't, they don't understand what you actually have to go through in the gym to be able to perform at the highest level. And you still sometimes work the harder, you know, as hard as you can, you still don't get the results because you're going against other people that are also high level and that are training just as hard as we are. So, fighting the high level, man, it's tough, you know, like, uh, in this preparation for PFL, I have trained like the way I have never trained like in my whole MMA career. So I've been doing this for 11 years. Um, people that have been with me since the beginning, they, they have noticed a difference, you know. Uh, I'm not in camps, I'm not training for like six, eight weeks before a fight. I'm staying in the gym, I'm training every day. I had my first couple of fights. The next day after the first fight, I was back in the gym since I didn't get any injuries. Um, same thing happened in the second fight. It was a quick fight, no injuries, so the next day I was back in the gym. There's no time off, there's no cheat day, like as far as eating whatever I wanted. Like the whole time of being like through diet, training like two to three times a day. To have an idea from, from the last fight to this next fight, I've had like eight, 10 weeks to prepare for, for, for the, the playoffs. And uh, the only thing that I did differently than the first couple of fights was to take one Sunday off. So far it was one Sunday off, like then the rest like the Sundays or all like at least one session, like you know, at least uh, either I would do a strength conditioning or just do jiu-jitsu. But there's no such a thing as taking time off. There's no such a thing as like, you know, easy day. So I feel like things like that, that's what makes the difference between like professional fighters and the, athlete, the, the elite fighters to the regular people. Like that. Anything you want to do to be great at is going to take, in my opinion, three simple things. Um, commitment, consistency, and major sacrifice. If you want to be great at anything, it's going to require those three simple ingredients. Now, I say it's simple, but it's not easy. And so, yes, I could, we could write that on paper, we could talk about those three things, but can you do that via actions on a daily basis? Can you do that for a year? Can you do that for five, 10 years? Can you do that? Because that really is the measure of what these fighters do on a daily basis. You know, they're sick, they want to be in here. They have birthdays, they have kids stuff, their wife, they have their anniversary, they're in here. The, at the end of the day, this is not a old man sport, this is a young man sport. So their window in life to get done what they need to get done as a fighter is very short. Um, their lifespan, of course, we hope is, is a lot longer than that, but it's very short to get in here and, and have an opportunity presented in front of you. But with opportunity creates a bunch of responsibility and that is to put in the daily work. And I respect these guys a ton for what they do. They have to uh, put their bodies in, in positions that um, most people would never do. And they also have to sacrifice on the outside a lot. You know, These kids, most of them are young, and most of their friends are not doing what they're doing, sacrificing like they're sacrificing, coming in here, staying weeks away from their family so that they can do a training camp. Most of the people their age are out chasing the tail, drinking beers, watching you know, sports on TV, hoping and wishing that they could have been that. And these kids are actually doing that. And in turn, what happens is those friends that they have they eventually are watching them on the TV going, damn, I wish I would have done that consistency, that commitment, that sacrifice that he's doing because that looks fun, that looks great, and what he's doing is absolutely changing his life. And it's not just about wins and losses or money. It's about what these guys are learning on a daily basis to apply in life as men, as women, as fathers, mothers, you know, husband, wives, those type of things. And to me, that's what's most important is we get to share the vehicle of fighting but we get to spend life via that vehicle and, and watch these people transform into amazing people. Um, Eight years with your wife. Yeah. So, where did you meet her? Um, at a random house party. My, uh, I was, 
just hanging out. I went to some local fights that day. And then my buddy hit me up and said, hey, do you want to just come hang out for a bit? And I'm usually sober. I rarely drink. And I think he was more looking for a DD. And uh, get to the house, and I see some cute little blonde chicks sitting on the couch and uh, try to get her attention. I, uh, my buddy was sitting next to her, so I sat on the opposite side of her. And I started, like, playing around with him, but reaching my arm around her and try to get her attention. And, um, you know, I ended up eventually getting her number through Facebook. And then... Uh, hanging out with her I'd come home on weekends because we lived up north back there she lived up north back then which is like an hour and a half north so I'd go up every weekend and uh, eventually started spending the night at her house every weekend and practically moved in on her house during the weekends even while she was hanging out with some other guy took over his place and next thing I know she's mine for the rest of life my life hey he looks handsome hey you look handsome <laughs> you know I'm being selfish coming out here to focus more on my training she has to do keep up the house while working the jobs while taking care of the kids and I mean she's she's literally given up not given up but done above and beyond man she's done everything she kept our family afloat when we were struggling she she's done it all and the fact that she just continues doing it and going above and beyond is just crazy how much how much she can do I mean it's crazy what I, I've tried hanging out I mean I've good with the kids but like we have the kids that i can't keep the house clean cook dinner work a job myself and so it's just crazy how much she's willing to do and sacrifice herself just so i could continue living my dream so on a typical day after practice what do you, do you usually do um after practice I usually come home shower uh just hang out eat some good food sometimes i'll go over to the benavidez home Megan will cook us some some good dinner and we'll watch some TV. We're big into TV shows, so we'll watch like a whole season of TV shows together with Joe and Megan Benavidez. But usually I just hang out at my place and it's pretty this is kind of like lockdown mode for me. All my all my my wife, my dogs, my house, everything's back home in Ohio, so this is all fight camp mode. Kind of just lock it down if i'm not training i'm at home recovering or i'm getting a massage or something like that but nothing too crazy i just come home and relax in the air conditioning out of the vegas heat in my career support comes from my family my team my coaches my wife most importantly because she was with me before i was making any money or even supporting myself. There were months where she was paying the rent for both of us and basically taking care of me until I was able to pay that stuff after fights. And she's been with me. She's seen the highest highs and the lowest lows. And my family, they've been through all the wrestling years, all the hard work I put in before I even started fighting. The, the bitty club wrestling, middle school, high school wrestling, college wrestling, competing at the highest level, the NCAAs, and just the the support that they have and knowing that I've put all the work that I can in and that every time I go out there, I'm gonna put the, the, biggest, the biggest fight of my life, I'm gonna put everything I have into it, no matter who I'm fighting, no matter where it is, could be the biggest stage in the world and I'm always gonna go out and compete and they're always going to support me whether I win or lose. You know, once I win this million dollars, you know, I'll have my wife help invest it because she does real estate. So, like, she could, you know, invest in some houses, buy some houses that we could rent out, hopefully get income doing that. And, you know, everything just works out how it's supposed to. So, you know, I maybe be a stay-at-home dad after I fight because my best thing, my best thing is being around my kids. I'm a, I'm a kid myself. So, I, mean, I just want to be with them. I want to be with my family. That's why I'm sacrificing this whole year being in Colorado away from them all so I could make it work in the future. I'm the champ baby, nobody works like me. When I get my hand raised on December 31st, 2018, it's gonna be not only a sigh of relief, but also all the support from my family, coaches, teammates, leading up to this point from the very first day I started doing anything competitively. That's all going to be a culmination of that coming together. 
and I've won belts before. I've won titles before in wrestling. I've I've done almost everything you can do in the sport as far as a, a winning standpoint comes from. But to have all the support that I've had and leading up to this entire point, it's just going to be relieving to finally get to this point where it's really paid off. And when I'm talking paid off, I'm talking million paid off.